so we're back in the garage today and we're going to be installing some yellow DRLs on the G80 here. So if you haven't heard about it before, whether you have the laser lights or the regular LED lights, you can actually change the color of your daytime running lights from the stock kind of white bluish color to yellow. So there's four modules inside the headlights, two on each side. You just take them out, replace them, put the new modules in. And uh, after that, your DRLs should be yellow on the green. I think it's gonna look really nice. And honestly, the process is not that hard. I got my set of yellow DRLs from Horizon Motorsports. I've been buying a lot of parts from them over the years for my cars, uh, my brother's cars, a lot of my friends' cars. So I decided to go with them. And within this little bin, you'll have four separate little modules. Just make sure when you're taking them out, you take note of which one is the right side module and which side is the left. So right here, you can see that it says right. So that means this is for the right side of the vehicle. And this other set of modules is for the left side. And it should say L on that one as well. So there's nothing else that we need to do here for right now. We need to go ahead and start taking the car apart. It's honestly a very simple process. So let me show you guys how to get this done. So one of the first things that you're gonna wanna do is get the car up and get this wheel off. So now you're probably wondering where are these modules located? One is sitting right underneath this fin panel right here. You can actually just take a T20, remove both these screws right here, pop this out and get access to that module. The other one is a little bit harder. It's actually sitting underneath this wheel well liner. So you're gonna have to remove this entire wheel well liner. A lot of people don't even remove the wheel, but I just wanted to make it a little bit easier for myself. So I'm gonna remove it, remove this entire wheel well liner, and then from there, you should be able to access the module right around this area. All right, so like I said, just a number of 10 mils here. So now that we have the one, two, three, four, 12 10 mil bolts, we should be able to pull this entire fender liner out. Now that we got the fender liner out, it's just a matter of taking a T20 here, loosening this up and getting this thing out as well. Let's see, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that last screw up at the top there was very hard to take out. And um, what I ended up doing was finding a T20 bit like this one, a very small one, because this is the only thing that would fit between the bolt and the frame of the car. And then from there, I took a tiny wrench from the bottom side, just grabbed it on like this, turned it, took it off, turned it, and so on. That was the only thing that I could find that fit down or up there. So if you guys are struggling with that screw, that's probably one of the only ways you'll get it out unless you have some specialized tool, which I don't. Should be able to pop this out, and then from there, a wire connecting the actual module itself. Should be able to just pull it and unclip it just like that. Compared to the first module, this one is super easy to remove. Just two screws right up here at the top, very simple. Same thing as the bottom one, there's gonna be a wire connecting to the actual module itself. Disconnect it, and you should be good to go. These are the modules out of the left side of the vehicle. Now to remove the actual modules from the housing, better if you warmed it up just a tad bit so that way the heat sink can loosen up. So I'm actually just removing this rubber grommet piece just so when I'm heating this up, I don't mess it up any. So now I'm just gonna take the heat gun. Let's see if that's hot enough. There we go. So old module, so this is the old one. Now we're just gonna throw in the new one here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and clean this up real quick with the blade, just make sure that's nice and clean. So as you can see, I got majority of that glue off, so now it's just a matter of taking the new module, ripping off the backing paper, and sticking it on to the housing again. And it should sit in this orientation, just like that. Just gonna press it down from different angles. So now, just gonna do the exact same thing with the lower module, the one that goes inside the wheel well. So though, 
So I just used a bit of a scotch Bright pad just to clean up some of that heat sink that was on there from before. So it's pretty clean, then I used some rubbing alcohol and I did that on the other one as well, if you guys didn't see that. But now it's just a matter of removing the backing paper again, sticking it on there and letting it sit for a little bit. I think they say four to five hours. I'm not sure if that's for the heat sink version of this or is the 3M tape a little bit different. We just stick it on and put it back in the car. But just to be safe, I'm gonna give it a few hours, let it sit, and then we'll go ahead and install it back in. So it's been a little while and I think we're good to go ahead and throw this back into the car. We'll start with this one right here. It goes right into the top, plug it back in, mount it back down, and we're basically done. I'm just gonna plug this back in and it should sit just like that. Now we gotta throw in this one. Now I got that first screw in on this lower module down here, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to show you guys how I did that top piece because I didn't see any other videos show how to do it unless you have a specialized tool. So let me see if I can somehow get some visual in there so you guys can see how I did it. It is gonna look a little bit overexposed, but that's because that was the only way I can show it to you guys. But what I ended up doing was I'm just gonna drop this plate, I'm just gonna drop this into place and tighten it as much as I can by hand first, just so it's a little bit less work. We're gonna take this tiny bit that we have and we're just gonna place it right up into place. And again, tighten it as much as you can by hand. It'll make things a little bit easier. I think we got it. It's almost there. Like I said, if you have the specialized tool for this, great. But I'm sure most people are in my situation where they don't have it, so they gotta make do with what they got. Now, if you're on the fence about getting this done, this is gonna be the deciding factor for you. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how it looks on the stock side. So, unlock. That's how it looks right now. We're gonna go ahead and lock it. And this is how it looks with the new modules in. That looks so much nicer. So much more aggressive too. Ah, oh, that looks so cool. It actually makes the blue around the laser lights pop a little bit more as well. But you can, you can notice it here, but here? Yeah. I'm really liking that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So basically you take off the wheel well liner. There's 13 10 mil bolts in there. You remove all those. There's gonna be two screws, T20, holding the module in from the bottom side. And then there's gonna be two screws holding the module in from the top side of the hood, which is right there. So you remove those. You're gonna replace them with the new modules after warming it up a little bit and removing them. I did damage it just a bit. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but I think we're still good. I don't think I damaged any of the actual components themselves. And then it's just a matter of plugging it back in and make sure it works before you do what I did and bolt everything back down. If it didn't work, I would have to go through that entire process again. So now I'm just gonna throw everything back together, do it on the passenger side and get this thing out the way and I'll show you guys how it looks final full and complete. You guys learned from my mistakes. Remember when I said I took off the little weather stripping around the module so that I don't mess it up? Well, I reinstalled the lower module, which is a harder one to install, back in without the gasket. So I had to take everything apart again, put the gasket back on, and then reinstall it. But now we should be able to see how this thing looks. So we got both of the headlights done now, and moment of truth. That is fire. That looks so much nicer now. It also looks so much more aggressive. So I can't wait to get this car back down on the ground 
but we can't really do that right now just because we're waiting for this. I'll probably wait a little bit. Hopefully the Amazon driver with my metal mesh comes in pretty soon here. Then we'll get this car back on the ground and give you guys the final look. Before I put everything back together, I did want to show you guys one thing. If you guys haven't seen the spacer video, go watch that. I did install some 12 mils in the front and some 15 mil spacers in the rear. And a lot of these videos don't tell you about is the fact that you are gonna rub in a very specific area. Now, I'm not sure why the G80 or the G series have all their kind of oil coolers in spots where you can nick them, uh, but what actually goes here is a set of fins and basically it just kind of pushes air through the fins into the oil cooler itself, but this is actually where it rubs. So on the front side, you can see right along here it was rubbing and these fins actually end up breaking, snapping from the edges right here and sometimes can even hit your oil cooler. So what I went ahead and did is I just removed all of this and Horizon Motorsports actually provides some mesh that you can put on the back of here, make sure that it's all protected and make sure that your oil cooler never gets hit. So I would just keep that in mind if you guys are doing this project and you guys are gonna have your fender liner out, just take a second, go ahead and put some mesh around here, protect it, get rid of those fins. And you actually need to do that on the bottom side of the car right here as well, which I'm gonna do on a later date. I unfortunately didn't realize that mine were broken. I didn't realize that Horizon Motorsports had the mesh kit on their website, so I didn't order it. Um, so today I just kinda did a quick one day shipping for some metal mesh. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it around there, make my own kind of mesh out of that, but that's gonna be the cheaper way to do it. Whew. That looks so much nicer compared to the whitish blue. The car just looks more aggressive now too. Honestly, super happy with this. But yeah, honestly, it was a little bit easier than expected. I will say if you have a stubby T20 ratchet, then definitely use that. I didn't, so that was what took me longest. I did this side in about an hour, and then this side took me all of 20 minutes because I knew how to do it. And then it just took me a little bit longer trying to situate my wheel well liner. But if you don't have spacers and you don't have any clearance issues, you can just skip that part, put the wheel well liner back in, and you're basically good to go. So we'll go ahead and close this. Yeah, tell me that doesn't look good. That looks amazing. I'm probably gonna go record some Instagram clips and stuff now and uh, show everybody on that end. But yeah, that's not the only thing we got coming for this car. We got PPF already planned, we're booked, scheduled in. And then after that, I think we're gonna throw some new wheels at it. But for today at least, I think we're gonna call it here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.